Welcome back everyone, hope you are well. Today is a day for ulti snips. I've seen some other people doing videos on ulti snips and I realized, oh wait, I never did one even though I moved all of my snippets over to ulti snips. Well, most of them. So with Vim and Vim script, we're easily able to decide um, and define our own snippets using Vim script. So for instance, I have some HTML snippets here. I have some markdown ones. These are pretty common, um, and so there's a lot of syntax, and the way that VimScript works, it means that it's all going to be a single line of text, which means it can be a very long line, and it doesn't really read very well, so it's hard to edit them and just write them in one go and be done. Uh, it also can have some other unexpected behavior, but these VimScript snippets are still sometimes very powerful. You can say which type of file, all in one place what type of um, uh, Vim mode that you're in to run them. Uh, and then you could specify with leader characters or certain other characters. You can do things with like leaving placeholders and actually using the Vim script actions, such as, you know, go to values up and then uh, capital A to append at the end. You know, there is some really good usage of Vim script snippets, but it is very hard it is possible. I actually have a couple examples um, that I've done before with LaTeX code snippets. I don't think I have them in here anymore, though, of doing tab stops with Vim snippets. So having a tab stop and being able to go through multiple sections in the code, type something and then tab to the next stop, or having the values written in two places or more at the exact same time because it's the exact same number tab, tab stop, very difficult to set up and configure in Vim. Where ulti snips comes in makes this very easy to do. And there's a lot of functionality that you can do with ulti snips and some really cool stuff that uh, you can try. So, ulti snips is a Vim plugin. You, it is put out by server, haha, server, on GitHub, ulti snips. The, this repo is really awesome, and it does have uh, or some, he has some great videos. Like watch these four videos, you will know what you need to know to use ulti snips, and it'll even get you introduced to actually running um, Python interpolation, Bash. Uh, you, you can actually use Bash and Vim script snippets that actually call the scripting languages in your snippet itself. So the Python examples really cool. I don't have a use that really demands that kind of firepower or setup but there is some really cool stuff that has been done with this. Um, next, the snippets actually live in your, well, I'm, I'm using um, NeoVim. So in this case, .config, nvim, and then in a directory called ulti snips. And these are all the snippet files I have. There is a repo out here. Uh, I think it's not that one. Um, there's, there is a repo that works with, I think it's COC and they, um, yeah, in any case, uh, they have like Vim snippets. They're like a whole repo devoted to like multiple languages of uh, snippet files. Let me find that real quick. <clears throat> okay, I'm not gonna waste time doing this. If you look up COC, I think they link to it. It's uh, somebody's repo that has uh, a whole collection of like a plethora of languages and all the snippet files for those languages and it will work with ulti snips. I'm too meticulous and I want to write all of my own and frankly I just didn't like a lot of the ones that were already given as defaults. So I basically defined all of my own snippet files for all the files that I commonly work with. Uh, for instance, this all here, um, this will be a, a, a snippet for any file. I also have a snippets.snippets .snippets file, so by actually writing uh, s in a snippets file I can actually make a template of a snippet for that file. Uh, this is getting a little bit meta here, but this is actually, this was helping me when I was actually writing out all of my snippets. Um, I have, for instance, I have my flash script here, and uh, say I wanted to type something in bash, like I wanted to do a new if statement. I could do if and then tab, and then it actually writes out all this syntax for an if statement for me. And if I do U for undo, it will actually remove the whole step of writing out all of that uh, code in 
that's really useful because it's all in one action. I don't have to constantly button mash uh, the U character. But if I went into my SH snippets, and this is all the ones for, my, for Bash, you can see I have uh, snippets that look like this. Like this is the syntax. Snippet, what you actually have to type before you hit your um, call, your expand function key, in which case minus tab. So if I do um, hash bang like this, oh, hash bang, and hit tab, it will expand to actually be the shebang for my script files. Um, you always say snippet, what you want to actually have to type before you can hit tab or whatever to complete. Then you actually write out your, you know, your actual text. Um, I have a blank space, a blank line there, and then I have dollar sign zero. So the dollar sign numbers and braces are the tab stop definitions. In which case, let's go to a different example right here. Snippet text, txt, I can actually just do a, um, just cat a bunch of text out here. And the dollar sign one in these curly braces with, a, with uh, the dollar sign like this, this is saying, this is the first stop you have on your um, code snippet. Uh, if I called this one, I would immediately be brought here. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go txt, tab, and now I am actually in there. But that dollar sign zero, you could put it in curly braces, but if you just leave it as dollar sign zero and you tab again, that is actually your ending place or where you end your code snippet. Uh, let me see here. So if you have multiple, like for instance, my if statement, if I did if, it would actually take me into the actual test. And then if I hit tab after typing, it would actually take me inside of the if statement and tab again, and now I'm out. And I can easily just write my code, tab, write my code, tab, and I can keep writing new code or call another snippet. Uh, you can also have default text in here. Like for instance, this one has two colon and then the word count. This means that by default, it's actually going to bring your cursor here and select a word that says count, and it will let you know what this um, argument is expecting. You can just immediately type over it. So let's do that. Four is the, the snippet. So I'm going to go to, uh, where is that file? Oops, Q, V flash. So let's do four, tab. All right, so it's currently set to I. I like that iterator name. Ah, now I'm selecting the word count. If it's greater than, let's just say we had a variable. So double quote, dollar sign, var, dollar, uh, double quote. There we go. I don't even have to enter insert mode. It just, you can start typing over its visually selected uh, value, which is that number count. Tab again, tab again. There, my snippet is done. And so just like that, you can easily integrate these tabs, tab stops default text and just basically put your entire code chunk as you would have it laid out with white space and all inside between these two snippet uh, commands, snippet and end snippet. Now this uh, syntax requires end snippet as one word at the end. Basically, this is the exact sort of syntax that if you're gonna do any sort of like R programming in R Studio, R Studio snippet files are exactly the same as these, exactly the same, except you don't have this end snippet over here and then everything needs to be indented by one. So it, like all of this syntax directly under snippet here for the four I, all of this would have to be indented one tab stop and that's it. That is the same syntax as uh, in our studio snippet file for a variety of other languages. So the format is you know sort of similar and can easily be um, uh, converted over to um, whatever you're gonna do in our studio if you wanted to. So I'm not gonna get into like the, the more advanced features like the uh, Python interpolation and the other languages, but you can easily create these for any sort of file type that you want. I have several, um, I have you know, LaTeX, I have Vim, Vim, actual Vim script. I don't think I have anything in here though. No, I don't. Um, Vim wiki, this isn't working. I, I have issues with the Vim wiki file type. I think I've submitted an issue on the repo that when you have a Vim wiki, um, sometimes your markdown snippets don't work or our markdown snippets don't work. Basically markdown files because Vim wiki takes, and I have my Vim wiki set to use markdown. So it's causing all sorts of weird, unexpected behavior. But in general, um, HTML, uh, R, you know, bib for bib files, and then something all, all is for any sort of file type and snippets for my snippet files to write more snippets. 
So you can easily define these for any sort of file type you want. Are you not sure what, you're, what you should call it? Like this says markdown, not MD. So what do I call XYZ type of file when I'm making my snippets? Well, there's an easy way. If you have the plugin installed in Vim already, and for instance, I just use Vim plug and I install it that way. If I was going to open a file, so let's say I don't have any snippets for C code. So I have some C code over here that I'm messing around with um, right there. And I want to mess with my snippets for C code. I can do colon, enter command mode. I can type ulti tab, so ulti snips, capital E tab for edit, ulti snips edit. If I execute this command, it'll open up a split and you can see down here where it actually, the file location is, is .config nvim ulti snips c dot snippets. So it will automatically generate a new snippet file for you based on whatever file type you call this command from and you can develop snippets for that command file. So if I was going to do a snippet, um, let's just do main and then the command is int main parens brace and then tab in first tab stop and then we're going to give it a closing brace and then a dollar sign zero and snippet. And the cool thing about this is I can save and close the snippet file and the snippets are already available. I don't have to reload my buffer at all. I can just type main tab. There we go. Snippet now exists and is functional. So this is a really powerful feature because say one of your snippets isn't working right, you don't have to go to your vimrc, update your vim script, reload all the buffers that you have open for it. It's just open ulti snips, change your snippet to be correct, close it, you're done. There it works. Or like how I do things, I'm working in a file, I'm like, oh, I would really like to make that a snippet because I use that a lot and I don't have to type it all the time. I could just open ulti snips, add my snippet, and I'm done. There you go. So I think Ulti Snips is one of the best plugins I installed recently because it just makes all of my snippets really easy to do. It doesn't, it's not a single long line like Vim script and you can see it right here. That's cool. It's different color because of uh, GNU Sto, but in any case, it's a really useful feature because I can easily just put all my snippets in its own file. I can encapsulate them this way. They don't clog up my, um, my VimRC and they don't all read like long lines because they're not written in Vim script. And they have tab stops. Really great plugin. I'm sure it, ha it plays very well with things like COC and You Complete Me. I don't really like them or the language servers. I just don't really deal with that. But with my snip way of doing snippets, they're excellent. I still have some uses for some of these things, uh, but beyond that, I think it's a really cool plugin and I definitely think you should try it. It's, it's been amazing for my workflow. So brief shout out to Devin. Thank you for Devin for being my patron on Patreon and supporting the channel. And for everyone else, I will see you next time.